Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It was a time of war. It was a time of peace. Is it time to wake up or is it time to fight? And who do we fight? Just exactly who is our, who is our enemy today? Is it really Al-Qaeda? Is it really ISIS? Or is it really the enemy within? This is the Savage Nation. I know these are alarming words. But when I see the real conspiracy is the conspiracy to unseat a duly elected president, however unpopular he may be, he was duly elected in this democracy of ours, when I see a corrupt regime trying to undo an election with a smear campaign of the lowest order, something that is akin to that which was done during Stalin's, Stalin's reign of terror in the Soviet Union, I have to say to you, we must fight the real war. And that is the propaganda machine and the crackpot conspiracy theories of John McCain. There is no better example of turncoats and traitors in the history of America than Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold, if you study your history, was an American general who went over to the British and fought against the founding of this nation. This American general said, we don't really want to be separate from Britain. We want to be part of the new world order of Britain at the time. Well, let me tell you something. John McCain is exactly the Benedict Arnold of our time. It may be Halloween, but McCain doesn't need a mask. And so I ask today, is McCain cracked or a traitor to the ideals of America? Now, many of you will say, how dare you attack a certified war hero? And you have a good point. To me, he is a war hero, but it doesn't mean that he is infallible. There are many war heroes who are quite cracked. In fact, there are many war heroes who are suffering severely from PTSD. Moreover, the, the senator from Arizona is also suffering from cancer and is on major chemotherapy, which affects the brain. You heard me. I don't know what it's going to take for people to recognize that this man is either cracked or a traitor to the ideals of nationalism. He gave a speech that is so shocking that it's worth talking about. He said we have to fight protectionism. That means let China run all over us. He said we have to fight nativism. That means America should not be in love with itself. We have to defeat those who would worsen our divisions. Well, he ought to look at himself in a mirror. He said we became a great nation by tearing down walls, not building them. No, you're wrong, Mr. McCain. The reason you were sent to fight for America was to preserve our borders, language, and culture, not to destroy them, John McCain. And so we're going to look at John McCain as an example, the number one example of the deep state in the swamp. Because make no mistake about it, he is the deep state in the swamp that is trying to undo the election that we had in this country. That's going to be a major topic today. I'm not going to talk about the other thing to any extent today because we've all read it and heard about it ad infinitum over and over and over. Mueller and Mueller and Mueller and Schmueller. Mueller and Schmueller. We know Mueller ex went way beyond the mandate that he was uh, supposed to be following. We know Mueller is an aggressive prosecutor who is going after the small fry who had nothing to do with Russia. We know that Manafort was a perfect example by what we can read of the amount of money he got and what he spent it on. If we know one thing about Manafort from what has come out so far is that he's just another inside the beltway contractor pig. It's as simple as that. Did you hear what I just said to you? He's not alone, though. This has been going on for a very long time. Is that not what the election was about, to stop the pork barrel spending, the pigs inside the beltway from feeding on the tax base by steering contracts to themselves? Is that not what the election was about? Isn't that why we said no to Hillary and yes to Donald Trump? So why is it that McCain hates Donald Trump? Why is it that uh, the media hate, hates Donald Trump so much? As I warned you, 
and I don't think it takes a degree in electrical engineering, in Trump's war, there are trillions of dollars at stake. And I said to you in Trump's war that Trump faces relentless opposition from special interests in both parties who stand to lose trillions if Trump's America first policies, doesn't that sound quaint right now, become the law of the land. I warned you that not only will Trump have to overcome progressive ideologues like McCain, neoconservative ventriloquists like those in the media at the uh, little website that undermined him. Uh, for example, you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Mr. Bowtie from New York City, the guy who started his little magazine with his father's money, never held a real job in his life. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? Does anyone know who I'm referring to? The guy who never worked a day in his life, who wouldn't have been, uh, uh, couldn't have owned an ice cream stand, was, was it not for his father's money? Does anyone know what publication I'm referring to, Robert? Does anyone know who I'm referring to? I doubt it. Do they know that his son now runs the little uh, so-called conservative website that released the dirty information that was invented? Does anyone know who I'm talking about? That boy from Manhattan who couldn't run a Carvel stand in my, in my generation? Not only is Trump facing the Democrat ideologues and a military-industrial complex bent on permanent war, he is fighting progressive beliefs within his own inner circle. And that is my opinion of the fight that we are facing together. It's not just the enemies that you think you know, it's the enemies that you didn't know existed. For example, what website am I referring to when I say that little website? What individual in Manhattan am I referring to? Does anyone know who? And what does McCain have to do with all of this? Well, that's one of the topics we're gonna to talk about. As you know, tonight is the pagan holiday of Halloween when the children run around, eat too much candy, and get a hangover tomorrow, a hypoglycemic attack, and the dumb parents who themselves were raised on hyper levels of sucrose don't know any better but to feed their children the toxic poison of sucrose tonight and not know what to do with the child when he's out of control tomorrow. But I will remind all of you parents who were raised by ignoramuses who let you eat as much sugar as you wanted which is why you yourself are on prescription drugs for anxiety, depression, whatever. Uh, I will warn you that if you go to a zoo on a Monday morning, as used to be seen across America, you would have seen the uh, apes and the chimpanzees languishly lying around. They were half asleep. And that's because on Sundays, people who visited the zoo, zoo used to be able to throw candy at the chimpanzees and the other primates. And the chimps and the other primates would eat the candy. They'd get hyperactive and throw things at the people, throw uh, feces at the people. I remember in San Francisco Zoo, there was one particular chimp that was very smart. He would let all of the uh, uh, visitors gape at him and get very close to make believe he was playing. He was playing possum. And I swear to you, he'd reach behind himself and throw a handful of you-know-what in a wide arc, splattering as many as he could to get even with them. Well, now, of course, we're wise enough not to permit people to feed candy or anything else to poorly imprisoned animals in zoos, including the primates. But, of course, we now have the homeless bums in San Francisco doing about the same, and they're totally out of control. But that's a separate story for another time. Another topic I want to talk about today is the real collusion to bring down Trump. I also want to talk about Halloween and how Halloween has become bigger than Christmas in this pagan nation. I'm also going to talk about the war against white people in the United States of America. Yes, that's right. You heard me. If you are a white person, don't think you're crazy if you sense that you're being discriminated against. An article just came out by Daniel Greenfield, a front page mag, where he said, according to his analysis, discrimination against white people, it's real. The release of an NPR poll in which a majority of white people, 55% of whites, answered that they face racial discrimination, was treated by the vermin in the media with their usual cocktail of condescension, disbelief, and contempt. But we all know it's not up for debate. We all know that racial discrimination against Caucasians today is as real as the discrimination against minorities was under segregation. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Only one racial group in America today is subject to a system of codes, regulations, and laws discriminating against members of its race when it comes to what? Employment and education. 
whether it's advancement in a police department, a fire department, a university, or in a corporation. Affirmative action is an inescapably, an inescapably real and racist system that is as segregated as water fountains. I'm also going to talk about a psychotic professor at the City University of New York. I don't know how these people hold on to their jobs other than the chairmen's of the departments are crazier and more racist than they are. A psychotic professor at City Col University of New York at Hunter College, which used to be a very, very distinguished college uh, many years ago. It is now a cesspool, especially in sociology. She had the nerve to tweet that white families equal white supremacy, and by having children, if you're white, you are continuing the supremacy of the white people. Now, you know that if anyone said that about black people, they would be thrown off campus, and they should be thrown off campus. Campus. Can anyone tell me why a professor so-called like this is allowed to stay on a campus making so many white children uncomfortable uh, and uh, frightened for their lives? Well, those are some of the topics on the Savage Nation today. And the phone number here is 855-407-282. But I want to ask you something. Do you know why Halloween is now bigger than Christmas in America? I do. And I'm going to read you just one page. I told you I would start this around two weeks before the God, Faith, and Reason publication date, which is two weeks from today, exactly two weeks from today, God, Faith, and Reason. By the way, pre-sales are about equal almost to the book of Trump's war. I don't know if you know that. Just in case you want to know these things, no publicity, no show bookings, no publicity, nothing except what you've heard about, my loyal listeners, Nobody will have me on their show once again. I don't care. That's their loss. I have a huge audience. Without their audience, without their help, uh, Trump's war became number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Criticize me if you will. Revile me if you will. But you can't keep a good man down. Moreover, you can't keep the truth down. Let me tell you right now. Truth has a way of finding its way to the surface. No matter what the government, media, plants like Anderson Cooper, have to say. Speaking of him, a special case of stupidity and sneeringness like I've never seen. The man was literally sitting in his dirty chair last night, sneering as he continued to smear. Sneering and smearing. Sneering and smearing. Old Andy Cooper. Mr. Blooper, let me tell you something. You're nothing to us. Now, why does Andy Cooper and his ilk celebrate Halloween and not Christmas? Well, I have an answer to that question as well. It's in a chapter called Halloween is Bigger Than Christmas. I originally wanted God, Faith, and Reason to be published last week, before Halloween. But my publisher was wiser, and they said, no, hold it, for after Halloween and just before Thanksgiving. They were smart. They were right. And this one page is worth reading. Unfortunately, I can't read it right now as to why the book was published between Halloween and Christmas. It was published for a specific reason. God, Faith, and Reason, one page when I return. The question for today is, do you think McCain is cracked or a traitor to nationalism? Do you know why Michael Savage is banned by the media? Can anyone explain it to me? I, really, I would like an answer from my listeners. Listen to what I just said to you. Did you see me on one television show when I was promoting Trump's war? No, you did not. I'll tell you exactly what shows I was on. Uh, they're very same people who want me on again. Yeah, Alex Jones is going to have me on again. Thank you, Alex. Do you know that even Larry King with his small show asked me to be on his show? Thank you, Larry. I'll be on your show to discuss God, faith, and reason. But where is everyone else? What are they so afraid of? They would have a Nazi on. They would have a member of ISIS on. They will have rapists on. They will have perverts on. They will have degenerates on. They will have mass murderers on. Am I worse than all of those categories of people? I must be, because Andy Blooper and company are afraid of me. I wonder what it is that frightens them. Does anyone have an idea? 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. John McCain is cracked or a traitor to the ideals of borders, language, and culture. The Paul Manafort indictment, no signs of a Trump-Russia collusion whatsoever, and yet the average moron out there is certain there is collusion simply because they indicted a low-level intern. That was the object, was to smear Trump. We all know there was no connection between the intern and Russia. What they did here was smear Manafort through no-knock policies, which the left used to oppose. Remember during the early days of uh, the FBI and police breaking down doors without a, a warrant? Why the liberals scream, no-knock, no-knock, you violated the Fourth Amendment. Well, your FBI broke down Manafort's door. He may be a greedy guy, and he may have evaded taxes, and he may not have signed some forms, but I don't see any sign of collusion. The real collusion here is between Anderson Cooper, Wolf Blitzer, and the others on the sleigh ride of hell and the deep state that is trying to bring down a duly elected president. That's the real collusion here. Halloween is bigger than Christmas. This book is being published featuring Halloween and Christmas for a specific reason. Halloween is now almost bigger than Christmas in the United States of America. That is a further example of the decline of Western civilization which was built upon Christianity, not paganism. My desire in publishing God, Faith, and Reason now is to somewhat counter the overwhelming influence of the atheists and the agnostics and the witches upon our culture. Across the landscape of America at Halloween, whether it be on suburban lawns or in workplaces, we see little skeletons and cobwebs on lawns, on doors, and even on desks. Has anyone noticed that the cross and anything else related to Jesus has been driven out of the workplace. You can't do that. You can't have anything religious on your desk at work. But you can hang a skeleton from your workplace cubicle? That tells you the anti-God forces are now dictating the terms of our belief system. It's all in God, faith, and reason. If you agree with me, order a copy right now and give it to someone who you're trying to save. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. feel a little down, tired, or whatever, as I do today. I was up at 4 in the morning from an allergy attack from rotten Italian food that I ate last night with some hidden ingredients. It happens. I, I think, you know, I forget about it. It's nothing. I think of World War I. I was watching a documentary. So many millions of men were sent to die into hails of machine gun bullets by the psychotic generals. Even though they kept losing, they sent one team after the other over, over, out of the trenches, climb the ladder to your sure death. Do you know that in World War I, hundreds if not thousands of Allied troops were shot in the back by their own officers because they wouldn't climb out of the trenches into a hail of machine gun bullets so the fat general in the, back, in the background there could uh, go to his paths of glory? So I say to myself, they took the wounded and they pulled them back down in the trenches to let them to die and then something happened in late July of that year that you're not going to believe. An unexpected series of storms hit Europe, and the trenches filled up with water. And the wounded were laying in the trenches uncared for, and many of them drowned to death. And now we hear about universities where if someone looks at someone the wrong way, they scream that they need a safe space. They scream that they feel that they don't have a safe space. You hear this? I don't know how this country can survive another day, let alone another year. 
It's because of the crackpots, the degenerates, the sickos, the degenerate sickos who've taken over our universities. I got to hold back because I do respect my job. I love my position. And I know how powerful these psychotics really are. They run everything. Having a white nuclear family promotes white supremacy, says a New York college professor. I got to read this to you. I, I, I'm going to get back to everything else, but this one has been eating at me. A so-called City University of New York so-called sociology professor reportedly said in a tweet storm last week that, quote, the, the white nuclear family promotes racism. A so-called professor named Jesse Daniels, who calls herself an expert on, quote, the Internet manifestations of racism on the City University of New York page, said that white families promote racism by default. The so-called professor began her argument saying that she learned that, quote, the white nuclear family is one of the most powerful forces supporting white supremacy, adding that families reproducing white children are part of the problem as they facilitate white supremacy in the country, according to campus reform. She reportedly tweeted, quote, I mean, if you're a white person who says they're engaged in dismantling white supremacy, but you're forming a white family and reproducing white children that you want the best for, how is that helping and not part of the problem? The great professor reportedly ended her argument suggesting that, quote, white people should confront their racism and stop perpetuating inequality by leaving their homes for their children. Listen to what else this wonderful genius said. Until white people are ready to confront their own family's racism and participation in systemic white supremacy, it's not getting dismantled, this genius wrote. Beyond just calling out interpersonal racism, White people who want to be engaged in the work need to ask themselves about housing wealth. The genius said, white people, do you own your home? When you die, where's wealth in that house going? If it's to your children, you're reproducing inequality. Now, if you think that this crackpot is alone, you're mistaken. The universities, especially the East Coast liberal universities, are filled with such psychotics. They're anti-white, anti-heterosexual, anti-Christian, anti-Jewish, anti-quality, anti-truth, and they're surely anti-God and anti-reason. And I'm telling you, we don't have to take this anymore. I'm telling you this has gone more than far enough. I'm telling you that the universities must be forced to purge themselves of these racist psychotics before it is too late. And now I go back to what I have done to help purge the nation of the sickness. And that is my new book, God, Faith, and Reason. And I'm going to finish the one page on Halloween being bitter, bitter, bigger than Christmas. You can hang a skeleton from your workplace cubicle, but you can't hang a cross on your neck. That tells you the anti-God forces are now dictating the terms of our belief system, to believe in nothing but paganism. This section of the book is my attempt to make people aware of the cultural battle being fought and how it affects the souls of people in our nation and around the world. Because I am sure that if God were more present in our daily lives, whether it be the Ten Commandments in a classroom, a Jesus statue on your work desk, a Bible proudly displayed in your cubicle, or a prayer session from time to time at work, there would be less drug use and less insanity overall. That is why this book is being published. Just after the pagan obsession with cobwebs and skeletons at Halloween. I can hear many of you saying, oh, come on, Savage, don't make such a big deal about it. Just celebrate Halloween with all the other white suburbanite fools. You see, my friends, Voltaire was an observer of Parisian life and became famous for writing about the foibles of Parisian society. I am not that high up on the totem pole. I write primarily about the foibles of white middle-class suburbanites. Well, I don't want to offend anybody out here, but where I live, the lawns are clean and clipped. The garbage is put out on the right day. The cans are picked up on the correct, correct day. And there's scarcely a leaf left in the driveways because that would be disgraceful. They're all nice, liberal white people. But there's a big but attached to that. The larger the number of Halloween displays on a lawn or a house, the more ghosts, the more eerie things that they put up for their children and the neighborhood children, the more liberal the inhabitants are. It's just an observation. I don't have any ghosts hanging from my house. So if you're trying to find my house, 
It's the one without ghosts hanging from the trees and eerie spider webs on the hedge. The American people have given up their religion and their civilization and replaced them with a sort of death worship. I know a lot of people would say, come on, it's only Halloween. The kids just eat candy corn and have fun. But people, it's more than that. It's symbolic. This obscure pagan holiday has become bigger than the July 4th celebration of independence from Great Britain. Bigger than almost any other American holiday. Bigger than any religious holiday. People who don't go to church, who wouldn't be caught dead in a church, drape fake spider webs on their hedges, celebrating what? The Day of the Dead? These are symptoms of a dying civilization. Now, in my book, God, Faith, and Reason, I tricked you. I must tell you, I laid tricks for my readers. In a sort of antique typeset, we put in quotes from the Old Testaments. And the one I chose to follow that piece on Halloween being bigger than Christmas in a little insert is this. It's from Isaiah 32, 7 and 8, where it is written, The instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words and the needy when he speaketh right. But the liberal deviseth liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand. Isaiah 32, 5 wrote, The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be noble. For the vile person will speak villainy, and the heart will work iniquity, and his heart will work iniquity. Hi, John. To practice ungodliness and to utter wickedness against the Lord, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and to cause the drink of the thirsty to fail, Isaiah 32, 5. And now you know the rest of the story of paganism on the American university and the attack upon white people, heterosexuals, Christians, Jews, quality itself, why the truth itself is now outlawed on campuses. Surely God is dead, and reason has long ceased to exist on most college campuses, especially in the very hard sciences, which are also now under assault. Now, having read you that, we now go to one of the greatest disgraces in my lifetime, John McCain. How John McCain, this vicious and anti-nationalist, is beyond me. I will remind you that John McCain comes from an extremely patriotic American family. His father, his father Admiral McCain, his grandfather, Admiral McCain, Rear Admiral McCain, were great Americans, truly great Americans, and I salute them. I also salute John McCain when he was the man who was shot down over Vietnam and tortured mercilessly by the Vietnamese. You do know he was tortured by the Vietnamese, right? All you worshipers of other worlds and other peoples. See, we don't torture prisoners, but other countries do torture prisoners. But many of you were not around when John McCain was being tortured. And if you were around, you probably would have joined Jane Fonda on that anti-aircraft gun celebrating shooting down John McCain. John McCain gave a speech the other night that you must hear. He said we must fight propaganda and crackpot conspiracy theories. It's in three parts. I wonder if John McCain would listen to his own words written for him by somebody deep within the deep state. Listen to clip 12. Why do many Americans ignore our moral and historical knowledge and seek escape from the world we've led so successful? There are many wise answers to those questions. My own is, we are asleep to the necessity of our world leadership and to the opportunities and real dangers of this world. Really? We are asleep in our echo chambers where our views are always affirmed and information that contradicts them is always fake. We are asleep in our polarized politics which exaggerates our differences, looks for scapegoats instead of answers, and insists we get all our way all the time mm. from a system of government based on compromise, principled cooperation, and restraint. That all sounds very good, doesn't it? Those are nice words. Listen to where he goes next in attacking those of us who want borders, English as the central language, and the American culture reaffirmed. Listen to where this once heroic man went as he reads this Benedict Arnold speech written for him by God knows who in clip 13. All the while, the associations, rules, values, and op aspiration that comprise the international order we have superintended for three quarters order. of a century 
are under gathering attack from regimes that desire a world less just and less free and more corrupt. What is he and talking they are about? under attack from forces within le liberal democracies themselves, parties what? that preach resentful nationalism rather than enlightened self-interest, oh, nativism rather than equal justice. It's time to wake up. John, you should have awakened after 1977. I think you've been in a long, dark sleep, John. How in the world can you attack your own nation that is finally trying to defend itself from the invasion of the third world? What world do you live in, John? Oh, I see. You live behind... Ah, oh, that's right. You have bodyguards, John. And, John, isn't it true that you never go out in the streets of your own hometown because you're afraid to? Yes, John. That's the kind of nativism that you're talking about, John, where you're afraid to walk in your own street? John McCain, I have this to say to you. I salute you for your service to the country, but your father and your grandfather are turning over in their graves listening to the shame, the Benedict Arnold that you have become. And I am focusing on John McCain today for one principal reason, to show you how the war against a duly elected president is being fought from the top to the bottom by those within his own party and those plants of the deep state like Anderson Cooper and Wolf Blitzer and on the other channels as well. And now you know why Michael Savage is a voice in the wilderness. And the wilderness is where I love to be. Thank you for listening. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. some terrible breaking news on the savage nation attention 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 world attention world bloodbath in manhattan bloodbath in downtown new york city after driver shoots pedestrians from a car unidentified 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 cab driver oh really i think i can tell you it was probably a rabbi or a priest who did it uh not six people were shot by a gunman Firing from his car in Lower Manhattan just minutes ago. Cops were notified of the shooting, which took place at West Street and Chambers Street at 3.15 p.m. today. That's the East Coast time. The shooter is in police custody, not being identified yet, for fear that the moronic American celebrants of Halloween may actually wake up to the fact that their country is an actual Frankenstein nightmare owing to open borders. But there's more to the story than that. Oh, yes. In addition to the shooting, multiple people were reportedly hit by a vehicle in Lower Manhattan. Does it seem coordinated to you? Oh, really not? No, it's just coincidental. Lower Manhattan, where multiple people injured. It appears that several people were hit by a vehicle around Hudson Street and Chambers after 3 p.m. A car just ran over two people and then crashed into a school bus. I see two dead bodies and city bikes on the floor destroyed. One person is in custody. Is this the same event or are these two different events? One or two? One. It's one, it, it's one. it looks like one event. Driver shoots pedestrians from car. Home Depot truck. Four shot dead. In either case, it certainly looks like terrorism to me, but I really shouldn't rush to judgment. I should be a more constrained person, someone along the lines of uh, those on the news media without ever identifying the perpetrator, unless he looks like a returning military veteran with a cross on his chest who has a family and four children. A gunman opened fire from a Home Depot truck that apparently plowed down four riders on a bike path Tuesday off the Hudson River in Lower Manhattan, eyewitnesses said. One man was in custody. Eyewitnesses reported seeing a gunman firing from inside a Home Depot truck. Nobody has yet described the gunman. He shot about 15 times toward the pier and down West Street. Hmm. The smell of gunpowder hung in the air as police shut down the West Side Highway in mid-afternoon on Halloween. Well, we don't mean to uh, bust your bubble, but we have terrorism in Manhattan, my friends. And I'll go out on a limb and tell you, this is a coordinated terrorist attack. 
Maya de Blasio was briefed on the situation and took time out from Halloween celebrations to confirm there was no active threat. Are you listening to this? Witness Frank Brito, age 45, told the news he saw two trucks crash into each other and then a heavyset man get out of one in a blue tracksuit and chase someone, firing five or six times. Listen to me very carefully, all of you revelers of paganism. This country has been at war long before 2001, and you had a clear choice to protect yourself. But you let psychotic judges in stinking black robes bust open the borders. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It's terrible breaking news out of New York City, a so-called gunman was inside a Home Depot truck, of course the company has nothing to do with it and started firing, plowed into four bike riders. It's called a bloodbath. One man is in custody. One man is in custody. Now, we are broadcast across the country on this show. This show is the number one show on WABC in talk radio. There is a huge audience of taxi drivers and listeners in Manhattan right now. I'm inviting you to call me at 855-400-7282. If you are in the vicinity of this tragic event that is unfolding in Manhattan and tell us exactly what you see. We have to break away from regular programming. We've been talking about the collusion to bring down Donald Trump. We've been talking about Halloween is now bigger than Christmas and how God, faith, and reason was timed specifically to counter this paganism. We were talking about a wacko college professor at City University in New York who said that having white families is equal to white supremacy, and she's not been fired. But we want to talk about this terrible shooting in Manhattan. Again, the phone number is 855-407-282. Robert, you have a tape of someone at this point. If you have it, would you please play it? Let's listen to this. So there was a car crash, and after the car crash, I don't know, I, I saw the car crash, so I ran up the bridge. When I ran up the bridge, I saw this dude with two guns. And the guy with the two guns, for some reason, was running around. He was getting chased. And then all of a sudden, four shots went off, and we all just started running out this way, like this. And when the, and then right after the shots, all of a sudden, I think the cops came out of nowhere. If you see across the street there, there seems to be like two bodies. There seems to be a blanket over a body. So it was so much. It happened so quick. We, I don't really know what happened. I just saw a dude with the two guns, and then all of a sudden, four shots went off, and we all just started running. Like there was like probably like 30 to 40. Like kids, like middle school kids, and we all just took off that way. Yeah, it was crazy. Okay, New York Daily News is reporting chaos in Lower Manhattan as witnesses say driver of Home Depot truck plowed into four bike riders and opened fire holding two guns. If there is anyone at the scene or anyone in Manhattan who knows more about this, again, call the national radio program heard around the world called the Savage Nation at 855 407 As we get breaking reports on this terrible situation, we will give them to you. But I want to go back to the topics that we began before this terrible news out of New York City. One of the questions was, what's happened to John McCain? Is he a, is he a crackpot or a traitor to the American way? And we played one of the sound bites from a speech he gave to a few, uh, a few hundred naval cadet, cadets last night. He said we have to fight against propaganda and crackpot conspiracy theories. I would say that he is a great example himself of those exact statements. Listen now to clip number 14 of John McCain as he tries to sway young cadets into not following the mandates of the military. I believe in Americans. We're capable of better. 
I've seen it. We're hopeful, compassionate people. And we still have leaders who will uphold the values that made America great and a beacon to the oppressed. What does that mean, McCain? But I don't take that for granted. We have to fight. We have to fight against propaganda and crackpot conspiracy theories. We have to fight isolationism, you. protectionism, you. and nativism. That's you. That's we have you. to defeat those who would worsen our divisions. That's we have you. to remind our sons and daughters that we became the most powerful nation on earth by tearing down walls, not building them. You're a liar and a sick man. You are a sick man. You're a traitor standing up there in Annapolis, brainwashing the next wave of naval cadets. We did not become the most powerful nation on earth by tearing down our walls, you moron, you. We helped tear down the walls of the Soviet Union, you lying, deceitful old fool, you. You hear what he just said? We became a great nation by tearing down walls. He means the Berlin Wall. But he wants to tear our borders down, opening, opening us up for, to the further invasion of the country. What in the world is going on with John McCain? And I think you now know the answer to my other question. I've had five best-selling books in a row. If you think that's a small accomplishment, I got another guest coming for you. Five, count them five. I can name them all, but I won't bore you with the titles. One after the other with virtually no television appearances. I ask you a question. I'm one man. I'm one man alone in many ways. What is it that they're afraid of? Why will they not have me on their shows if I have such a huge, successful following? How is that possible? I'm also waiting to hear from callers on the biggest story, and that biggest story is of the shooting and the crushing of people in lower Manhattan. We're waiting, I'm sorry, for updates on this, on the Savage Nation. Cor Let's take some quick callers until we get the updates out of Manhattan. Corey on KSFO line one, line two. Go ahead, please. Yeah, hey, Michael. I was, uh, you asked the question, why do you think people did not have you on because you're such a best selling author? I think it's because you're a reformer. And just like Martin Luther, which today is the 500 year anniversary of when he nailed the 95 theses on the door of Wittenberg. And I think they're afraid of that. They're afraid of what's going to happen when people grab a hold of your ideas. So, in other words, if, if Martin Luther were alive today, Anderson Cooper wouldn't have him on CNN. Absolutely not, because they're afraid of what of, they say. Even though the liberals, I mean, they have serious problems, they're not ignorant of history. And they know what happens when, when reform takes place. They're going to lose their position. And just like the papal powers of Martin Luther's time, these guys are afraid of losing their hold and power on people. And you speak a voice of reformation, of change, of not bringing in something new, but of reforming and going back to what made America great and what makes it right. And they do not want to wow. give any platform. All right, well, you're very, very literate, Corey. I can't say I don't love what you're saying because it's very, very, uh, very nice to hear someone who salutes you on the radio. And I'm not looking to just have my uh, shoes shined on, on the air, but I think your answer was very literate. And I will send you a free copy of my great book, God, Faith, and Reason. It was written for one reason only. And it was not to buy a new car. It was not to buy a new house. It was not to, to buy a new set of suits like Paul Manafort. It was not to take an expensive vacation. I've had all the vacations I could ever want for the rest of my life. I don't go anywhere. I don't want to go anywhere. It was written as a thank you to God for having given me what I have here. I mean, it's you know, if I ever tell you the struggles that I had to get here and the struggles that I have to stay here, you would not believe it. Many of you assume I just get up here and shoot my mouth off on the radio every day, and it's so easy to do. Well, it doesn't happen that way. It's a daily struggle. So I'm not complaining about it. I'm not lying in a trench in World War I, dying in water, waiting to be uh, saved. No, my friends. In part four of the book, there is a section called God and Country, and I have to read you just a simple page from it, if I could find it. I'm a little upset right now about the Manhattan situation because we don't have any new information. Why would God care about politics? How does America fit into God's plan? How did God help build and raise up America? How has turning away from God led to national to a national decline? I know you think you've heard all of this before, but just look around you today and tell me if you've heard all of this before. As you celebrate with the cobwebs and the skeletons, tell me if that is the America that your parents grew up in. Is it a better America? Is this a better place than it was when your mother and your father walked the streets of your town or your city? 
Is this a better America than it was when your grandfather and grandmother walked safely in the streets of America? Answer that question honestly. Is it a better America when you have sociologists at universities saying the, that the white race should stop reproducing? Is that a better America when the children are taught that they're the wrong race and should kill themselves, basically? It's not a better place. It's a civil war that we're fighting right now, and you've got to decide which side you're on. It's that simple. Right now, it's a civil war of ideas, and we're losing, incidentally. Randy on KSFO Line 6, go ahead, please. Yeah, Michael, this war on uh, white people started uh, right after World War II when the public schools started teaching white people to be ashamed of themselves, their culture, and their history. So white people have been conditioned to uh, basically be told to go to the back of the bus. Well, I don't know that it happened after World War II. I don't think it began then. I do know that when I was a, a young college student, which was in the 50s, believe it or not, the university that I went to, Queens College of the City University of New York, where all the poor people went, I couldn't afford to go to a paid school. It was a great school. But it was filled with professors who had fled Europe. Many of them had fled Hitler and came to this nation and rewarded this nation by teaching outright socialism or communism under the guise of rationalism. Is that what you're referring to, Randy? Well, probably, but in 1964, when I was in high school in Oakland, California, our teacher was talking about the Civil War, and he brought up slavery, and he said, what we did to the black people, we could never repay them. And I raised my hand, of course, and said I never owned any slaves, and I don't own anybody anything. And uh, he said, oh, what we did, and I said, there we go with this we. I said, maybe you did something, but I didn't. Anyway, on my report card, you get academics, which I got an A-plus because I'm a history nut. But in the uh, citizenship part, I got a D, and it said disruptive in class. Well, my father was an Oakland policeman, and one hmm. day after I brought my report card home, I heard this, Randall, and I went, uh-oh, I'm in for it. <laughs> but it's just disruptive in class, and I told him. And he said, well, you continue to be disruptive in class. He says, you don't have to listen to this baloney. So it started. Your father was right, but unfortunately today, all of the teachers, with very rare exception, most are, Exactly like that racist teacher. You know that. It's it's now endemic in the schools. It's even worse. It is worse. They're teaching white people not to have white families. I mean, diverse. Now, now this is a prelude to South Africa. Let me explain something to everyone listening to this show. I have, I have a few people I know who live through South Africa. One of them is the Jaguar mechanic who's repairing my car. I won't mention his name. His family left South Africa, and his father said to him, the verbiage that we are now hearing coming out of the media and the universities is identical to that which preceded the civil war in South Africa, which ended up with the genocide against white people. That is what this man from South Africa warned me. I said to him, it's not going to be the same here for one reason. And he said, what is that reason? I said, in Africa, the black people were the native inhabitants of the country. The black people are not the indigenous people of this nation. They are 20% of the population, and a goodly percentage of black people in the United States of America are doing very well indeed. Do I have to remind everyone that Barack Obama was president? Do I have to remind everybody that there are billionaires who are African American? No, I don't have to remind you of that, but you have to stand up to the truth and not fall down for the lies. It's that simple. So, Randall, I wouldn't sit here quaking in my boots that suddenly we're going to have uh, tires put around our neck with gasoline on them, and someone's going to throw a match in our neck simply because we're white. Winnie Mandela is still in South Africa, and I think her ideas belong there, not here. Randy, thank you for listening. I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We have a live eyewitness from Lower Manhattan as to what happened. Six dead, 21 injured. NYPD says it's not an accident. The suspect was shouting. We don't know what language he was shouting in. And before we get to the live eyewitness, I've got to tell you about a very important uh, notice for people who travel for business, and that's about winning and losing, right? You've heard this, but it's important. 
Uh, you uh, pop open an overhead bin, you find it empty, that's a win. So you sleep through a wake-up call, that's a loss. Uh, well, if you buy your business trip at Upside.com, that's not just the win, it's a triple win. Number one is because Upside has the absolute best available prices for flights, hotel, or rental cars. Number two is that Upside will reward you with a gift card to places like Amazon.com whenever you buy a business trip. And number three is the amazing six-star treatment that you're going to get from them. One recent Upside customer was called away for an emergency meeting and had to miss his wife's birthday. So a person from Upside sent her flowers to try and help ease the disappointment. Good, right? And that's just one example of how Upside Navigators go above and beyond for business travelers. Upside Navigators are instantly accessible 24-7 by voice, chat, email, or message on the Upside app, even reaching out to you with useful info to help you avoid a problem before it happens. I'm going to start your Upside six-star treatment right now. Go to Upside.com. Use my code SAVAGE. You're going to get a minimum $100 gift card to Amazon.com. You heard me. That's code SAVAGE for a minimum $100 gift card to Amazon.com when you buy your next business trip at Upside.com. Upside.com. You deserve a better business trip. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. We now go to Lower Manhattan. Jeff uh, Roven on line 10. Jeff, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. Thank you. Well, we hear there are six dead, 21 injured, not an accident, says the NYPD. What do you know, Jeff? It was absolute chaos. Uh, my building is right on that route, and um, I was outside, and I heard all kinds of uh, screaming and commotion, and it was very difficult to see what was going on. It was about five blocks north, and uh, that, that's roughly a quarter of a mile. Um, but... Uh, I went to the roof of my building, uh, which is 36 floors up, and you can see the police converging on the area. Uh, they've trained for this kind of convergence uh, coming from all over. They sealed the area immediately. Uh, you could see bicycles. You could see people uh, just lying there on this bike path. And I should explain that the bike path runs between the Hudson River and the West Side Highway, and it's incredibly uh, uh, it's populated by a lot of bikers, a lot of uh, rollerbladers, uh, just pedestrians. Uh, well, wait a minute. Did, did, he, did he jump onto the bike path? He, he made a hard right uh, onto, off of the West Side Highway onto the bike path around Houston Street and drove for roughly 10 to 14 blocks down to Chambers Street before the police stopped. Well, wait, it's, wait, the New York Post is reporting bloodbath in downtown NYC after driver shoots pedestrians from his car and then ran them over. Well, it's not clear whether he was shooting at pedestrians or at another driver. He had two automatic weapons. One of the one of the police officers I talked to, who, who I know down here, uh, said he was he was well armed. It's not just a kind of a casual, uh, you know, gun you keep in your pocket or something, um, which people do down here. Um, so he was. Uh, it's it's also not clear whether there's anyone else in the car because there was a, there was a lot of shooting. Uh, I think most of it probably came from the police. Um, but whatever the Well, do we know who the shooter is? Did he scream in, in, in English or in another language? Do we know that? I couldn't hear it from the rooftop because I said it was 36 floors up. But uh, uh, Well, Jeff Rovin, this is a terrible situation. I know it's unfolding and we're going to get, um, re you know, all, you're going to go down there, Jeff, and report a little later on the show? Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll go take a look and see what I can find out. And I will. All right. Call us on the cell phone. I got to go. Four seconds. Savage Nation. Terrible tragedy in Lower Manhattan. Another terrorist incident, according to what I can read. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. Zero. Friends, yes, my friends, I'm sorry to report to you that my instincts were correct. You're not going to hear it yet, but if you're still listening to me, I know I'm not heard in New York City right now. They went to local programming, obviously, because this is a New York story, but it's an American story. It's a worldwide story, especially now that uh, our fight for our borders, our language, and our culture is being destroyed by the left. According to my guest, the incident in Manhattan that I immediately called as a terrorist event, looking at the signs that I saw. Jeff Rovin just reported, a cop told me that, yet yeah, he's on the ground. 
Yes, it was definitely an act of terror. Yes, it was definitely an act of terror, according to an NYPD cop reporting to uh, my friend Jeff Rovin in the street. Breaking news update. Of course, you're going to hear the generics. Multiple injuries and apparent road rage incident is how ABC is reporting it. Can you believe this? Can you believe that they're calling it a road rage incident? Can anyone believe that this is the news media that we have today? A road rage incident? That he pulls out two guns and runs 12 blocks down a bike path? Who in the world at ABC would believe it is a road rage incident? Well, my friends, that's the world we're living in. And men like John McCain say that uh, we're nativists and primitivists and we're filled with propaganda and crackpot conspiracy theories. McCain says we have to fight isolationism, protectionism, and nativism. No, I don't believe so. Not at all. No, I don't think it's road rage. I think that we have evidence thus far that uh, will emerge as time goes on. Here's another report out of Manhattan. You're not going to get anywhere else because I have a man on the scene. Are you ready? Would you like to hear it? Are you listening to this show? If you're listening out there, would you let me know by calling 855-407-282? I need to know if my audience is still here. I don't know where you've gone. Maybe you're so fascinated by the horror that you've stopped calling on the other subjects. But I just got a report from Manhattan. Cops wounded him in the legs and have him in custody. That's the latest I just heard. This is from my friend Jeff Rovin on the streets of Manhattan. Cops wounded him in the legs, have him in custody. Okay, my friends, let's go back to the regular programming that I prepared for you on the Savage Nation. McCain said, um, well, I don't know if you want to hear about McCain. You want to talk about Halloween? A so-called sociologist says we should avoid cultural appropriation in our Halloween costumes. Listen to how psychotic they become in a soundbite number three. Let's hear what she has to say. If it's a group that you are not a part of that has been historically discriminated against or disenfranchised, avoid dressing up like it. We might say that that group's identity is not a costume, that it's their identity. So you're taking all the kind of romanticized notions. It might be a geisha or it might be a a Pocahontas image. And these are seen as reductive, insensitive, exoticizations of the You know, in, in my, I'll tell you the truth, the, these people belong in a mental hospital. People who would call dressing up in a Pocahontas costume or a geisha costume for Halloween a reductive, insensitive exoticization or some other gibberish they invented in the Academy of Insanity, they belong in a madhouse wearing a straitjacket on, on serious medication. Listen to the rest of the sickness that passes for liberalism today in 04. Is this the best way for you to celebrate that person or that culture? Generally, costumes are are about trying to mock, trying to uh, replicate. You're stepping into their skin without actually having to have that full experience, which often comes with a lot of hardship and discrimination. You have to check in with your own conscience, with your own ethics. Really be prepared to have a conversation. (laughs) What am I consciously comfortable with and what will put the individuals I'm going to be around um, mentally at ease as well because it's not fun if you make everyone around you uncomfortable. Okay, I'm, I'm speechless. I think now you know why I'm a man alone, why I sit here in front of this microphone talking to millions of people, I write best-selling books, and yet I am boycotted and banned from television. I think you know why now. And uh, they don't want to rock the boat in plain English. They may agree with me, by the way. Many of them in the media agree with me. I know it for a fact. But they're terrified of the terrorists who run the um, networks. They're terrified of the terrorists who run the advertising business. And so this is it. Got to thank God for what you have. I don't want to make this about me. I want to make it about you. The phone number is 855-407-282. We're giving you updates from the terrorist event that is just unfolding in Manhattan right now. And we're looking at the collusion story. That is the collusion of the deep state and Hillary Clinton to undo a president who was duly elected. We are looking at an around-the-clock propaganda machine that I have never seen operating like this before with almost a, with rarely, rarely, if ever, any voices of dissent. Perhaps the worst of them last night was the fool of fools, Anderson Blooper, 
who sat there with a, a sneer on his face in his little chair with a panel of dunces repeating the big lie over and over again that arresting uh, Manafort had something to do with collusion of Russia by, by Donald Trump. It looks to me like Manafort was just doing business as usual inside the Beltway and that if he broke the laws, he should go to jail and pay the taxes that he obviously avoided if uh, what we're reading is correct. But if you think he's alone, you're mistaken. But what does it have to do with Russia? I don't know. Tell me what that has to do with Russia. Tell me what Manafort has to do with Russia. I can't put two and two together, can you? And yet the average guy out there, the stupid average guy out there, has already made the connection that Anderson Cooper was put there by the deep state. See, Cooper was put there, in my opinion, by the deep state. The man's ratings are not very good. Any more than guys on some of the people on other networks have very low ratings, but they keep their jobs because they're put there by very powerful forces and they're, they cannot be unseated no matter how low their ratings are. So they're there to promote the propaganda that the very big power structure out there wants to be promoted. And so they don't want you to really look too carefully at things. And uh, that's all. Mark, uh, Fox is saying it was a BB gun? A BB gun? I'm not going to put that on the air. Where, where do we hear it's a BB gun now? There are dead people in the street. Wait, Mark on line two, what, what are you reporting? Yes, uh, during your commercial, during your, uh, your break there, uh, Fox News had reported uh, that it was a BB gun and a paintball gun. And here's one of your friends calling in. You know, we know it's... it's How could it be a BB gun if there are dead people in the street? I've never heard of anyone getting killed from a, ba- a BB gun. Have you? Well, tell me about it. Well, that's, that's, what's, that's what's coming in on your, uh, on your little break there. Oh, well, nice to hear that it was all... So it's not a terrorist event. It was just a man with a BB gun. Well, no, no. I, I hope I hope I'm 100 percent wrong, and it was just a guy who was shooting uh, at uh, Halloween balloons with a BB gun, and he misfired. We'll hear more. All right. Hey, look, Mark. It's going to get crazier today. Wait till you hear the propaganda as it's spun all day long. They got, they're trying to hide something from us again. By the way, speaking of conspiracy theories, Mark, did you read that one of the Las Vegas police uh, fired his gun inside the room where the uh, murderer was found dead and they just admitted now that one of the officers fired a gun inside the suite remember they were telling us they got there and he was already dead from a gunshot wound yes yes oh now it now wait now now the las vegas police department is reporting well oh well wait a minute one of our officers actually fired his gun inside the room now if they got there and he was already dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound why did the uh, las vegas cop fire the gun can you figure that one out mark I think on a deeper level, Michael, I think, uh, I think people behind the scenes uh, may be getting threatened in their personal life, uh, whether, it be, whether it be their wife, their, their life, their children, uh, and, they're, and they're forced to, you know, do something that they really don't want to do. Well, I don't know. Six dead, 11 injured. The suspect was shot twice, but is not dead. Are you ready for the rest of this? I just got it from the top source. I, I'm really shaking because my instincts are rarely wrong. Are you ready for this? I want you to listen very carefully. I want you to hear me very carefully. You'll understand why I was just preempted on some stations to cover the, quote, propaganda called the news. They want fools running around Manhattan reporting nothing, like BB guns. The suspect exited the vehicle shouting, Allah hu bar. It was not a BB gun. The suspect possibly drove for eight blocks, as Jeff Rovin reported. The FBI is on the scene. The lying New York mayor said there was no active threat. Schools in New York City in that area are on lockdown. Six dead, 11 injured. The so-called suspect is in custody. He was shot in the legs but is not dead. He exited the vehicle shouting, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And yet the news media is reporting that there is no terrorism related. I think you know now why I'm the most feared and revered man in the media. I think that's truly the way it is. The most feared and most revered. It's that simple. 
My friends, listen to me. We're in a war, we're in a war right now. It's a war for our mental survival at this time. It will soon be something more than our mental survival, as you can see today in New York. Unless our borders are slammed shut, unless all of the people who are on FBI watch lists are immediately detained in internment camps. Let me repeat that in case you got it wrong. All you liberals who just felt a twinge in your guts. Unless our borders are immediately sealed with the National Guard, Trump should call out the National Guard in every state that borders Mexico and seal the borders immediately. All of the over 1,000 people who were said to be on FBI watch lists for terror-related activities should be rounded up immediately by the FBI and DHS and put into internment camps until we can, quote, sort this thing out. Now, I know it may offend some liberal lawyers who were not hit by the car in New York or struck by a bullet, and I know they would say I'd rather see 99 innocent people I'd rather see 99 guilty people go free than one innocent man arrested. Well, I wouldn't. I'll take a break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. terrorist incident in Manhattan to report on, and I was correct. He did scream Allahu Akbar when he got out, even though your news media is burying that. You'll hear more about it as time goes on, and I will report on it in the next hour as well, but I want to talk about something else, which is sleeping well, and believe me, that's important to me these days. And yes, I have an advertiser called Casper Mattress, and I do use the mattress, and I sleep like a baby because it's a great mattress. It happens to be a high-quality mattress at a very, very good price. And you should sleep cool and comfortable every night like I do with Casper's two high-tech foams. Certainly better than the old overpriced mattress you probably have. Is it a time to get rid of it? Casper ships right to your door for free in a small a small box. You can say, how did they get that in there? And they'll pick it up if you don't love it and refund you every dime from its breakthrough design and superior quality to its packaging to letting you try it for 100 nights. It's no wonder Casper was named one of Fast Company's 50 most innovative brands of 2017. Sleeping on a mattress is the best way to try it, so put Casper to the test in your own home for 100 nights. Risk-free, go to casper.com, code SAVAGE. You're going to get 50 bucks towards the purchase of your mattress. Casper.com, code SAVAGE. Get $50 towards the purchase of your mattress. Casper.com, terms and conditions do apply. Yeah, so he got on, according to my man in the street, the terrorist in Manhattan jumped onto the bike path on Houston Street. And he says there are no cross streets to stop, to stop anyone all the way down to Chamber Street. He said he had to plan this in advance. The Esplanade there is an uninterrupted strip. I've walked on it. I know what he's talking about. Are any stations reporting that he said Allahu Akbar? Julie on WDRC, which stations are reporting that he said Allahu Akbar? Yeah, I'm in Connecticut. WDRC very clearly read that on the 430 News. Now, they're owned by Connoisseur Media. I don't know who gets their news, but the guy very clearly said it. But you're not hearing it on ABC or CBS or Reuters, are you? I I don't know. I mean, you know, the guy's probably going to lose his job, right? (laughs) Six dead, 11 injured. I don't think they were shot by a BB gun. The, The suspect was shot twice in the legs. Suspect is in custody. Suspect exited the vehicle shouting, Allah Akbar. FBI's calling a possible terrorism incident. He ran down people on the bike path for over eight blocks. The communist mayor of New York City said there is no active threat. Shall I say the Sandinista-loving socialist mayor of New York? Will that make you feel better? No active threat. Schools in the area are on lockdown. Jeff on WBMQ Radio in Georgia, Line 3. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, um, I just wanted to um, ask you, since 2011, an average of six Americans have been killed on American soil by foreign-born terrorists. But since the same time frame, an average of 10,000 Americans a year have been killed by drunk drivers. 
considering drunk yeah. drivers are a thousand. Well, I think we should outlaw car. I think what you're saying is we should outlaw cars. That would make sense. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying. Well, I- well we should outlaw alcohol. That would help, wouldn't it? But no. we should do anything but but stop immigrants coming in who may kill us. Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying it's 1,710 times more likely. Well, that's good. Then we should let more of them in, since all of them are so wonderful and love the country. No, that's I'm I'm not I'm just making a mathematical comparison here. My God, mathematical <laughs> comparisons are wonderful, but they don't they don't act, actually protect us in the real world in every case, do they? No, no. I mean, you're right. I was just I was just wondering what your response to that would be. Is well, my response is ban cars and ban alcohol, and let and let more terrorists in from Syria. Yes. Then that would satisfy your liberal uh, your liberal uh, quotation. No, no. I'm just I'm just looking at the math is all. So what would you suggest? That we let more people in from the Middle East or from uh, Africa who practice the religion of peace? To me. Jeff, should we let more people in from these from these nations who practice the religion of peace? Is that the solution? No, 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 no. It's, it's not. It's, it's equally dangerous and people die as a result of it. All right. Well, I certainly am opposed to drunk drivers. I think they should be punished to the full extent of the law. Okay, we have updates on the travesty and tragedy of the news in Manhattan when I come back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Attention multiculturalists, attention open borders activists, you have just accounted for another terrorist attack, this time in Lower Manhattan. He shouted Allahu Akbar as he ran shooting and killing, driving on a bicycle path in Lower Manhattan. And the fake news immediately said it was a road rage incident. Trump is 100% right. Fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news. It was not a road rage incident. He screamed Allahu Akbar after opening up with two guns, after running people down for eight straight blocks on a bicycle and pedestrian path. What is it going to take for all of you left-wingers to understand you're putting yourself and the nation in danger because of your doxies? What is it going to take for you to understand that your collusion with your liberalism is dangerous for children and other living things? You know, I'd like to ask those of you listening to this program around the nation and around the world to call this program and tell me what you are hearing in the news about this terrorist event that offends you most right now. How are they covering it up? Who is being most propagandist? Keaton on KSFO Line 8, go ahead. What are you hearing out there from the uh, fake news world? Hi. Well, I just I heard on CNN there was uh, a reporter interviewing an eyewitness, and she asked, did you get a look at the driver? And he said he did. And she said, describe him to me. Was he tall? Was he short? And the guy says, well, he looked like a larger man. I didn't see him from the front. I only saw him from the back. But he looked like a larger man, and he had his hand on his head. And then she interrupts him, and she says again, was he tall? But tell me, was he tall? Was he short? As if his height is at all relevant. I mean, we all know what she was really asking. I understand, right. What you needed to have is a description of of the killer, the terrorist killer, so we can be on guard for the next one in our midst. I understand what they're doing. They have not their heads in the sand, but they have their heads somewhere else. <clears throat> it's a very upsetting situation right now, Keaton. I'm sure that you're as angry as I am, not only by the fake news, but by the entire apparatus that permits these people to come into our country and kill us. That, you uh, know, we have to be you. so paralyzed. Well, we par- I'm, not, I'm not paralyzed. I don't feel paralyzed. I'm not paralyzed at all. I'm more vigilant than ever. I am certainly more vigilant than ever. Open borders, he shouted Allahu Akbar as he ran shooting and killing. Meanwhile, fake news says it was road rage. Well, I was right when I called it as a terrorist event. You remember what I said right off the top? 
I didn't say it immediately. I saw the situation as it was. I saw man and truck shooting from truck, man driving down pad and bicycle path. I figured, okay, it's terrorism. Right away, the media said, no, no, not terrorism. Knee-jerk liberals immediately said road rage incident. Then they said paint gun. And I saw dead people laying in the streets of Manhattan. I said, never saw anyone dead from a paint gun. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to risk my career. I'm going to say it's terrorism, which I did an hour ago. Well, I was right. Unfortunately, I was right for you. And what we're going to do about the next event is another story. Many of these people are brainwashed from childhood. Many of them have a mentality of murderers. They eat it, they drink it, and they sleep it. And they sit and wait to kill us and our children. And the media is only interested in the shooter's height. And dirty, filthy judges in dirty robes try to overturn Trump's travel ban at every turn. They want more of them in. Unscreened numbers. Unscreened numbers. And we're supposed to worry about Halloween costumes when people with killer costumes are arriving every day at our airports. Dan on KSFO Line 7, what's on your mind? Um, hi, Dr. Savage. I know you've talked about the coming civil war a lot, but it's beginning to feel more to me like it's a 21st in century incarnation of the French Revolution that we're seeing in the beginning of a reign of terror. Well, we understand how it works when you got so-called professors teaching people that the white nuclear family is racist and they should have no children, and that teacher is not fired from Hunter College. Yes, I would say that there is a mental civil war going on against one particular race right now. Yes, I would agree with you in that regard. Well, we have no more natural law. There's no more absolute truth, no more morality, and the only thing we're supposed to worship is the state and be yeah, but let, wait, wait. You, you say we don't have it, but I do have it. You have it. Millions of us have it with the majority. Well, but the majority, wait, the majority still have those values and those principles. It's a small group of psychotic anti-American minorities that are doing this to the country. Who get all the press. Well, because their friends are in the media. True. True. But I haven't given up my belief system. Nor I. I still, I still worship the same God I was raised to worship. I haven't started worshiping uh, chicken feathers and a, and a rock. Just keep telling us the truth every day on the air. We well, I'm going to send you the truth. It's God, faith, and reason. It's as close to the truth as anything I've ever written in my life. It goes back 40 years. That's it. That's it. It's simple. Six dead, 11 injured. Suspect was seen exiting the vehicle shouting, Allah Akbar. Drove for eight blocks down a ped path. FBI, mayor says no active threat. The mayor says there is no active threat. Go about your business. Nothing to see here. 855-407-282 is the phone number. You know, these are times that test man's soul. The American people have given up their religion and their civilization and replaced them with a sort of death worship. It's called Halloween. You think it's just a joke. You think it's symbolic. Maybe it is. Maybe it's nothing. How is it that this obscure pagan holiday has become bigger than the July 4th celebration of independence from Great Britain? How is it that this pagan holiday is now bigger than almost any other American holiday? Certainly bigger than any religious holiday, in, in, including Christmas. People who don't go to church, who wouldn't be caught dead in a church, now drape fake, drape fake spider webs on their hedges and put skeletons on their lawn for children to play with. What are they celebrating? They're celebrating death. They're celebrating the Day of the Dead. These are the symptoms of an increasingly dying civilization. You know, after that entry in God, Faith, and Reason, I, I know you're going to want to read this, and I, I'm, I know it's going to change a lot of lives when you give a copy to a friend. I wrote about Burning Man in the book, and I want to read you one paragraph because I'm not going to talk about this terrorist event unless there's new information. I never went to Burning Man, the festival in my life, not once. I didn't go to Woodstock either. My idea of fun wasn't lying around in the dirt, smoking marijuana or taking LSD, so I didn't go. But every year I have to look at the paper and read about celebrities and tech execs and with luxury camps flocking to Burning Man. Can I ask you, what is the value in going to an event where people walk around stoned out of their minds? Why does anyone go to the desert to an event where everyone gets stoned and drugged, with tattoos on their noses, tattoos on their eyeballs? 
What is this? Is there something wrong with me because I don't go to an event like this or I find it revolting? What is this Burning Man event? It's idiots in the desert wearing idiotic costumes while stoned. And what are they doing burning an effigy? If this isn't biblical, I don't know what is. This is what the Bible wrote about. Burning Man, celebrated by Anderson Cooper and the other fools in the media, is exactly what the Bible warned us about, the worship of false gods. It's the epitome of paganism. And why do people go to it? Because they don't believe in religion. They don't believe in God. This has replaced it. And they go to have a good time, you might say. But tell me what the good time really is. Getting an STD and coming home with mud in your eye? Well, they call it a festival, but I don't call it a festival. Burning Man is directly related to biblical teachings. And you have to understand that Exodus 24.4 in the original Jewish Bible says this, and then I will stop. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in water under the earth. And here they are making wooden effigies and burning them. And they're celebrated by Wolf Blitzer and company. And now you know why I wrote God, Faith, and Reason. I suggest you go right now to a computer or an iPhone and order a copy from Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. Not for you, but for that person in your family who is drifting so far away from your family that you don't recognize him or her anymore. You heard me. Maybe one little book of one man's odyssey. Some of the stories are tragic, some are funny, some are heartbreaking. Uh, I think maybe when they read Faith and Reason, my dinner with an atheist and a Buddhist, when I write a four-year-old's view of God, when I ask, is God real? When I ask, where is God? When I talk about the amulet, dominion, first fruits. Well, anyway, it's all in there. I'm not ready to go full bore on it. This, this terrorist event is freaking me out because once again, we were caught unprepared. Once again, America was caught with its pants down. Once Amer again, the left-wing media is covering up for the practitioners of the religion of peace. Once again, the borders need to be sealed. Once again, we need to round up everybody on the uh, FBI watch lists and intern them before the next group of people are killed. Remember, before Obama left office, I remember distinctly the very FBI that is now so quickly working in collusion to destroy Trump. Our FBI, I think it was under Comey at the time, reported that they had over 1,000 active cases that were open on their books of people who they thought would be terrorists if given the opportunity, and they were watching them. They always watch them until they kill children or blow up a school or run people over on a pedway. Why can't they arrest them in advance? Why can't they use preemptive detention for all those people on watch lists? I know it will offend people at NYU, Columbia, and Bolt School of Adults. I know those at the Adult School of Law will say it offends them because it violates the Constitution to arrest people merely on suspicion that they might commit a crime. Well, if your liberalism had been operational in America in the 1930s, do I have to repeat again that you'd be speaking German or you'd be a lampshade? What is it going to take for you to wake into the fact that you have enemies within walking around this country waiting to kill you? What is it going to take you to understand why we people who you call every name under the sun have been arguing for secure borders, in my case, for over 23 years? What is it going to take for you to understand that the travel ban was not only not racist, it was the smartest thing Trump ever did. And it was overturned by one rotten psychotic judge in Honolulu several times because he was celebrated by his friends for overturning common sense law. Well, here we now have a case of a practitioner of a religion of peace. At least it seems that way. I could change tomorrow. They could change the story and say he was wearing a Confederate flag that he was driving a pickup truck with a uh, uh, statue of Robert E. Lee in the back of it. Maybe that'll come out tomorrow. Maybe Anderson Cooper will get an effigy or a mock-up of that. That here's what we think it was. That we think there was collusion between the driver and shooter in Manhattan and uh, the Ku Klux Klan or those in the South who uh, love their heritage. And we have a picture to show you of a Robert E. Lee statue in the back of a pickup truck which we've transposed to Lower Manhattan, not to show you that they actually did it, but to show you that there was collusion between the man who did it, even though he's from Syria or wherever, and uh, those in the South, because it really had nothing to do with the religion. It had to do with principles of white racism that triggered the man. Don't be shocked if you see that in the very near future. This is how crazy it is. So what's the solution to all of this?
You want me to just sit here and bellyache? I've tried to come up with solutions. In Trump's war. I have a whole chapter on it. I'm not going to read it to you now because you've read it yourself. I have a battle plan. How many times have I written about borders, language, and culture? How many times have I written about Trump's war for our borders? How many times have I written about ancient mass population changes? I wrote Build the Wall, The Dream is Over, Disease Imports Still on the Rise. And I asked, how about sanctuary for U.S. citizens? Did you hear any of this? Did you read any of this in Trump's war? You can still read it. I say build that wall. 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 Throw them out. Throw them out. Build that wall. Throw them out. You get the picture, don't you? Or would you rather talk about the fake collusion story of a lowly intern or a greedy lobbyist from inside the Beltway, which has nothing to do with Trump and Russia? Is that what you'd like to talk about? Well, if so, then go to NPR, which I'd like to unfund. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. The death, the death toll is now eight. Eight are dead after the Muslim truck driver plowed through a bike path for eight straight blocks in lower Manhattan about an hour ago. And he purposely rammed into a school bus in a, quote, apparent act of terror. More than a dozen people were hit when the driver of a Home Depot, I don't know what the Home Depot truck has to do with it. I guess they're trying to make it domestic. And the man crashed into a school bus carrying three children during the rampage, and police say he deliberately targeted the school bus. They saw the driver swerve the truck, aiming it at the kids, and they said the driver, who practices the religion of peace, screamed Allah Akbar in the truck. He then jumped out carrying two fake guns and started running around before he was finally shot by police. I guess the police can be arrested now and tried by Mayor de Blasio for shooting him because they, he only had a paint gun. I mean, if, if he only had a paint gun, what did he actually do that was so wrong? He only ran people over. It could have been that he uh, fainted from low blood sugar. And he was just screaming to God to help him with his blood sugar. So I think the cops in New York who shot him should be tried for murder immediately and let themselves uh, prove themselves innocent because they only had paint guns. And we don't know whether he aimed at the school bus and screamed to Allah Akbar because he, he hated people. It could be he was begging God to help him with his low blood sugar attack. Yeah, right. Driver was taken to Bellevue Hospital after he was shot by police. A uh, U.S. counterterrorism official told NBC News that the intelligence community is unaware of any claims of responsibility, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's because they're busy trying to show collusion between uh, uh, Russia and uh, uh, Maxine Waters. So it's getting worse by the minute. We'll see what the evening news brings us. Kami de Blasio just admitted it was an act of terror, and he's giving a press conference. We have that, guys? He's giving a press conference right now? Old de Blasio. I have a photo of the killer sent to me by a high-powered person in the media. I don't know if it's up yet on michaelsavage.com. You could see it on the Drudge Report. Oh, look at that. He has a beard. That doesn't mean much, of course, unto itself. But it's a type of beard that you rarely see except on car shows. And uh, I don't know how that works, but it's the kind of beard you only see on car shows and amongst practitioners from uh, Syria and that area. It's not a joking matter. It's a matter of life and death. Borders, language, culture. God, faith, and reason. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Reporting on the latest terrorist attack in New York City by another practitioner who screamed Allahu Akbar 
And the liberals are trying to sweep under the rug the fact that all of their policies have not only failed us, but they're killing us. Attacker in downtown NYC bloodbath shouted, Allahu Akbar. This is now in the New York Post, latest update. I guess ABC, CBS, and NBC have not decided how to spin the story into saying that it was an act of uh, road rage, which is what they said initially. A man in a pickup truck killed eight people when he drove onto the West Side bike path in Lower Manhattan and then shouted Allah Akbar as he got out of the car with fake guns. Aha. Well, you see, maybe he was just screaming out for help. He could have had a low blood sugar attack, lost control of the car, and then screamed, God help me, and jumped out with a water pistol. And the evil NYPD, probably all white cops, shot him in the, in the behind because they're racist and they're too quick on the draw. And I think that the mayor should immediately have the police seize their weapons and their badges and put them under surveillance. In fact, he should inter the cops in the NYPD because this man may be a hero in his own way. He could have killed more after this diabetic attack that he went into. Yeah, right. Flatbed pickup truck suspect shot by police then plowed his car and up to 23 people on the path, killing seven, injuring more than others. Hit another car, got out and displayed imitation firearms. Man shouted, Allahu Akbar. Can I ask you why it's important to report that he shouted, Allahu Akbar? I, I, I want to, and that's a very important question. Why is it important that the media report that he shouted, Allahu Akbar, in a time when the world is drenched in the blood of Muslim terrorists? Why? Or shall we put it another way? Let's say you're from Berkeley or you're from NYU, or God forbid from Harvard, why should the media not report that he shouted Allahu Akbar? Do you think that they should be uh, uh, banned from being able to report that he shouted Allahu Akbar? In fact, do you think that reporters in the future who get pictures of terrorists, should they be of Arabic descent and have the beard, should they be forced to whitewash the beard from the uh, reporter, from, from the picture of the perpetrator? That's the important thing to know. Well, I'll be with you right to the end here on The Savage Nation because this story is not going away. The phone number is 855-400-7282. Let's take your calls. Philip on KVOR Radio. Go ahead, please. Hello, Michael. Huge fan. I just want to say that in the ISIS Manifesto magazine propaganda book, they tell you to rent these trucks, and you can rent a you know, F-350, F-450 for very cheaply, $25 a day or something or something, and uh, you can carry out these cheap attacks that, you know, cause a lot of damage. And I still think the wildfires in California and, and elsewhere, some of them, I'm sure, are caused by terrorism. I think we're going to see a lot more of this, and it's only the beginning. It's called the terrorists amongst us, the terrorists in our midst, because we have become so pacified from the stupidity of fearing being called racist or racially profiling that we're letting them pick us off one at a time in plain English. I mean, plain English, that's what it is. What more can I say about it? I'm not in charge of anything. If I were, I have a solution to this problem. And it's a pretty good solution. It'd be pretty quick, too. Uh, you wouldn't see too many more truck attacks if I were in charge. I'll tell you exactly what I'd do. If I was in charge of DHS, I would arrest everyone on an FBI watch list who is being trailed for potential terrorist acts. It's that simple. De inter them, all of them. Well, I don't know what's wrong with that. Do you? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, we need to protect ourselves first. And That's right, America first, survival first. But when you have a nation that is committing suicide and you've got millions of people jumping off cliffs calling it freedom, what can you do about it? What should those of us who love God and love life do? Jump off the cliff with them? Not me. I'll be the last one to jump off that cliff. James, I'm sending you my manifesto, which is God, Faith, and Reason. Enjoy it, especially now. Where is God? So you could, you could say that if you want to be cynical to me right now. Say, look, Savage, you know, okay, I listen to you, but what are you talking about? Come on, you're a rational man. You wrote a book, God, Faith, and Reason. Okay, so tell me where God was today for the people who you see laying on the roadside there in Manhattan, run over by this um, practitioner of the religion of peace. All they were doing was bicycling, now they're injured maybe for life. Maybe they're disabled for life because he ran them over with a truck. Where was God? You want me to answer the question? 
because I can. These are times that I, I like to be challenged on these questions. I think God is permitting these things to happen to awaken us to defend ourselves before we're all gone. I think God is telling us that unless we are willing to stand up and defend ourselves, no one is going to do it for us. Exodus 21, 23, I'm sure you've heard this one. They learn it every day in their schools. They learn it since they're little boys in madrasas of the type that Obama went to. I know that felt like air going into a hollow tooth. But the former president went to a madrasas while he was a little boy in Indonesia where he studied in Arabic and prayed to Allah. I don't know if you remember that. Now, unto itself, that's not a bad thing. There are many, many, many millions of loyal Muslims in this nation. As one called the other day, he was a, a soldier, so he said, and I believe him. We all know that. And they themselves know that more Muslims have been killed or harmed by fellow Muslims than by anyone in the world. But the... Um, Bible says, but if any harm follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Exodus 21, verses 23 to 25. And I inserted it into God, Faith, and Reason on page 93 for a reason. It follows my entry on how liberal judges are killing us. I wrote a little chapter called An Eye for an Eye, and then I quoted Exodus. Because unless we understand that the judges are not God Almighty and that the courts, which are run by liberal lawyers, who have almost no idea of punishing people for their crimes, we're all asking ourselves how we can make the pendulum swing to a more equitable justice system. And I say begin by reading the Bible and learn what what real justice was. You know, there was another story I didn't get to that ties into this issue of of uh, not sufficient punishment for the crime. I may not be able to grab it at this time because of the pressures of the moment that are upon us. I was reading about Benedict Arnold, and I compared uh, Benedict Arnold to John McCain. People say, well, John McCain was a war hero. How could he be, you know, how could he turn on the country like this? I said, Benedict Arnold was an American general, a war hero. He turned on America. Why can't John McCain be another Benedict Arnold? In short, the story I'm searching for that I can't put my hands on is about a man who had been in prison for three murders. They released him from prison not too long ago at age 70-something. He came out and just killed another person because the person entered his yard and he said he felt threatened. I say the judge who released him should be indicted. You know, there are things that could be done in a country that's gone so crazy. One of them is to hold people responsible for their actions. We do that every day. If you drive under the influence and you get stopped by a cop, you get a DUI, you get enough of them, you're going to lose your license and go to jail. But what if a judge commits a DUI every day, a DUI of the mind, with his liberalism or her liberalism? Why should they be permitted to get away? Whoops. Saw the story last week. A judge had condemned an innocent man to jail for something like 40 years. And then the man came out. He was released. They found that it was wrong. The evidence wasn't it. The judge, who's now a big lawyer, in a major firm, sat and apologized to the man he put away for 40 years and said, whoops, I'm sorry. You didn't get to see your son married. You didn't get to see sunrises or sunsets. Uh, uh, oops, I'm sorry. Well, if it was an eye for an eye, the judge goes to jail for 40 years. That might make the judges think a little more carefully before they sling that hammer down on the gavel and they say, drop dead, you're gone. And then they go off to a lunch or whatever, like you don't matter, like you're not a person. An eye for an eye would work in the legal profession. It would work very well. And let me say again, most of the Muslims who listen to this show, and there are many, agree with me. They want to lead the same lives that I'm leading, that they're leading, that you're leading. They want a safe home. They want a good place to educate their children. They want to be healthy. They want to be happy, and they want to practice their religion. But amongst them, there unfortunately are too many practitioners of an evil form of Islam with a poisoned mind studying the Wahhabi sect of Islam that was set out upon the world in the 1800s out of Saudi Arabia. I read last week that Saudi Arabia, I think the king said that they're going to practice a more moderate form of Islam in the near future. Well, it's a little too late for that. 
But the fact of the matter is, is that this Wahhabi sect should be banned in America. Anyone who preaches it should be thrown out of the country. Anyone who follows it should be deported. Any book that teaches the Wahhabi sect of Islam should be immediately banned in America. But I don't know if we can do it. Trump just simply tried a, a simple travel ban. And look what the psychotic judges did to him. Well, as I say to you, you can only pray so much. And the Jews learned one thing from the Holocaust if they learned anything. You know what that was? They learned that uh, as they were being thrown into the gas chambers with their prayer shawls and their, their tzitzis and their, their, their Torahs, they learned that the Torah didn't protect them. They learned that the Bible did nothing for them. As their women and children were being raped and machine gunned to death, all they could do was pray. I pity the old men. They were powerless because their guns had been seized and then their dignity was taken from them. There's one lesson to be learned in all of this. If there's one at all, it's fight with your life for the Second Amendment. I can tell you that in the bottom of my heart, it's the only thing we have between us and total, total loss of this nation. The Second Amendment is God given unto itself. Fight for the Second Amendment. It's the most precious of all because without it, there will be no First Amendment. And then without that, there'll be nothing left. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. The Jews learned one thing from the Holocaust. You know what they learned when they created the state of Israel? That it's okay to have the Bible in one hand, but they needed a machine gun in the other. And they didn't want to use the Bren gun anymore. So they developed their own. It was called the Uzi. And then when their young men and young women became paratroopers, they learned how to parachute out of airplanes holding Uzi guns, not Bibles. And they learned that when the enemy comes to cut your throat, they shoot the enemy dead in the streets first. And then maybe they put on a prayer shawl and go in prayer. But they don't hold up a prayer book and say, Oy vey, please don't hurt me. That led to the death of six million Jews. Never again. And we must not become the Jews of our time in this country through the psychosis of liberalism. We must never allow our desire for decency to destroy us. Never. Build a wall now. Install a travel ban now. Build a wall now. Install a travel ban now. Deport the judges who overturn the travel ban now. KSFO, Norm, these are very trying times. Go ahead, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, you asked, where is God? Well, if I think that we live in a perfect world, then why would we need God? It's these crises that we see in the world that's causing us to keep searching for God. Thank you. All right, that's very well put. I, you know, he, he put it in an interesting way, that if we lived in a perfect world, then we wouldn't even need God. So you could say God creates the, lets these crises occur so that we search for God. That's a very interesting point of view. I never heard it. I put it a different way, which is that how come I can't see God? Where is God? Why is he invisible? And I answered that question because I've been asking it since I'm a child. And frankly, I only answered it for myself two months ago. And not in a dry theological manner either. Drawing on my many years of studying Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, and other spiritual sources, as well as my anthropological background, I came to the conclusion that these glimpses of God that I experienced were the search itself. And the search is the finding itself. How the search to find God is the finding itself. In other words, when you're looking for God, you're actually finding God by looking for him. The, I don't know if you understand that. It's almost like E equals MC squared. It's the equivalent of Einstein's theory of relativity. I never understood why, if God was there, why I couldn't see him, actually see him. And then I realized the reason there's an invisible God for those of us who believe in monotheism, and that would be Jews, Christians, and Muslims, by the way, is because God did not want to be seen. Because God knew that once man saw him, he would dismiss him. So God hides from us. And he's only visible through strange, in strange ways. Let's put it to you that way. When you see dew on a leaf, when you see a baby born, when you see a... Well, I'll stop right there because I don't want to get too, too emotional right now. I'm on the verge of very, very grave anger. And at the same time, very grave tears. It's not a good place to be on the radio. So give me a quick break. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Oh, these are times that try man's soul. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Eight people murdered. Of course, the vermin in the fake news business are saying they were killed after a vehicle struck a bike path in New York City. The rats at AOL News are not even saying it was a Muslim terrorist who screamed Allah Akbar. And in so doing, they are weakening us in our ability to defend ourselves against such future events. The greatest defense against a disease is to know exactly what is causing the disease. And when you to continue to deny yourself what disease it is that is invading you, how can you defend yourself against this disease? Well, I'll let you figure that one out for yourself. You'll have to do what I did as a child, which is think for yourself. Is God real? What is real? What is fake? Well, I'll tell you this. Those people who are walking on that bike path or bicycling on that bike path, were living in a very real world. And then when the terrorists ran into them with the truck, they found out that uh, there's a difference between a dreamland and, and a real land. And it's no longer a matter of an intellectual discussion for all those poor people who were killed and injured by this terrorist screaming Allahu Akbar after he was shot in the arse by a cop. My only prayer is that the cops or cop who shot this terrorist are not called on the carpet by the Sandinista-loving mayor of New York, who may have said the man was simply, well, I don't want to go down that road because I can't even use sarcasm right now. All I can say is God bless America. Have faith in God and use your reason to defend yourself. Savage.